Let's talk oral landscape and mixing. And so let's say that that little round table right on the other side of the window is the kick drum and the bass. It's front and it's centered, right? I wish this uh, view was a little wider, but it's not. Um, and also I would put the vocal there. I'm trying to think of what else I might put in the middle, but let's just leave it for now with the uh, bass and the kick. Oh, and the snare, um, kind of front and center. Um, obviously the vocal would have to be, you know, loud enough that it wouldn't be getting drowned out by the snare or the kick. Um, but then as you go, I should, man, I wish I had a wireless mic right now. I'd run out in the yard. Uh, but here's the, the most important and most salient point about the entire thing is look at the mountain range. Notice how, because it's farther away, it has less detail. It has less color and it has less visual detail because it's farther away. Notice how the trees that are in the midground, um, where you know the color is still good and the detail is still there. So that's the point. Um, somebody asked a question after I think it was yesterday's episode, something like, you know, can you do a mixing episode with Rob or with um, oh, what's his name? Can't think of his name right now. Anyway. So, um, with Ron and Chris Murphy, um, but let's just talk the oral landscape part of mixing right now. And frankly, I'm not sure because I've never done any, you know, like dancey pop stuff. I've never done any electro pop, all that kind of stuff may or may not apply. So let's just make this about like a typical pop rock thing or an acoustic rock thing, stuff that I would have probably done back in the day. Um, no, that's not Rob's chimney on the left. Rob's chimney is the one that is center screen. See the bicycle or the tricycle? Just do a straight line from the tricycle. And I think that's Rob's chimney. Um, anyway, so that is the center plane. You know, the round table and the tricycle are center plane. Um, and let's use Rob's chimney as a uh, distant focal point as well. So how do you make something sound like it's in the middle yet further back? Well, the further away you go, the less vivid the image is. So that's exactly what happens in audio. Joseph Alonzo can't see the chimney. Um, well, are you looking at it on a phone? Uh, or are you looking at it on a computer? Because it's there, I can see it. I'm looking, you know, my picture right now is roughly four inches wide by three inches tall. And I can see the chimney, it's little, um, but it's out there. Anyway, so if you wanna make stuff sound like it's in the background, you shouldn't give it as much apparent loudness as things that are closer. Well, how do you do that? Uh, by not giving it as much volume, obviously, or level in the mix. Um, also, you may want to give it reverb that makes it sound or delay that makes it sound further away. And again, this is all contingent. I spoke a lot yesterday about context. Obviously, this is context or contextual as well. But that's the overarching theory behind mixing, I believe, is picking out where things go on the oral landscape. They're on a horizon. So, you know, if the, if the shot were wider, if I were closer to the window or I was actually sitting out in the backyard and you could see um, a wider thing, um, I might do acoustic guitar number one, far left, acoustic guitar number two, far right, and put them out around where the yard ends and the hill drops off. That would be a good place for them. Maybe even a little closer, you know, actually on the lawn. But by doing that, now I've given a stereo spread. So you want to keep things balanced on the spread. I mean, it would look odd if we were looking at this picture right now, this panoramic or landscape. 
um, it just wouldn't feel right to me anyway if, let's say, the yard were tilted, right? Um, I like it. It's level. It's symmetrical, other than the fact that I've got that uh, umbrella on the stand standing out there messing up everything. Um, I just heard my wife pull in the garage. Maybe I should make her go out in the yard and move stuff around. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, where does the tricycle sit in your mix? Uh, well, see, the tricycle for me would probably be like a harmony vocal part. And I'm glad you asked that question, actually, Marcus. It would be a harmony vocal part. Um, let's say that here, I'm going to go move that umbrella. Now we can't even see the tricycle. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, in any case, um, so let's say that the umbrella stand is the lead vocal. Uh, and let's say that the tricycle, which is now somewhat obscured by the stand from the umbrella, is a single harmony part background vocal. And let's say that I wanted to do oohs or ahs or some sort of um, stacked vocal. I would probably then take those and move them midway out into the yard, maybe to the edge of the yard, and uh, add a little um, pre-delay on them, add a little pre-delay on the reverb that I was sending. Sorry, burp. <laughs> uh, and... Uh, scoot them back and make them wide. If I were doing kind of like an Eagles or Bee Gees kind of thing, um, I would put a longer decay on the reverb. Um, I would probably actually roll off bottom end because they would be out there and you probably wouldn't hear the bottom end from them anyway. Um, but then if I were gonna do strings, the strings would probably be way out there past the trees. Maybe uh, beyond the, the strings are out beyond the trees. Maybe the reverb is almost as far away as the mountain. Again, it's very contextual. It depends on the song and the parts and all that kind of stuff. But something I mentioned yesterday, somebody asked a question about how I would record a violin. So if you take violins or a string section and add a lot of top end because you're listening to them in solo and you want to hear the strings sound really good, um, but you're doing it in solo and you add that, you know, somewhere around 2,500 hertz, uh, maybe something up around 4.3 or maybe even 6 or 8K. Um, what that does is it brings them closer. It's called apparent uh, loudness. So making things sound good on their own, out of context, and then putting them back in the picture, the landscape, it doesn't work. So there you go. There's today's tutorial about mixing and thinking in terms of an oral landscape. 